In this segment, I want to get into Yagi antennas. Now, we kind of touched on Yagi antennas back in the 2.4 gig series, but I really didn't go into uh, how to design them. Primarily because for 2.4 gig, they're extremely hard to get very accurate measurements. Now, we're going to be focusing closer on the, uh, the amateur radio frequencies, our 2 meter and 70 centimeter, or if applicable, uh, GMRS or uh, uh, FRS and PMR radios, which op all operate at about 465 megahertz, and 70 centimeter being in the 440, uh, 430 to 450 center band being 440, which is why it's called 440. But anyway, okay, so I'm rambling. Here is one of the antennas that I designed recently. Yagi's are a type, or a beam antenna, as some people like to call it, consists of the boom, which is usually a non-conductive material. I would suggest non-conductive for ease of use. Now the boom is what holds the elements. Now this element in the front here is called a director or parasitic element. All of the elements that are in front of the driven element, meaning the active dipole antenna, are called directors or parasitic elements. And the very last one in the ass end right here, this one is called a reflector. Now what happens is when radio energy hits this antenna, each one of the elements, are, so here's a reflector, our driven element, a director, a director, and if you had more and more, it'd just get longer and longer. Now, the dipole, the distance that that these are, um, the distance between these will adjust the standing wave ratio. I'm not really going to get into the standing wave, calculating standing wave ratio of dipoles because it's extremely hard. We'll get into other ways of finding standing wave ratio in, in forms of antennas later. So all of the directors will, have, will be up to 5% smaller than the one in front of it, and it's precisely calculated up to 25% shorter in an exponential of minus j. It's really complicated math when it comes to Yagi antennas, so we're really just going to focus on putting them together and just using software to create them, and we're really not going to get into the complicated math because I can spend three hours on that alone, and I really don't understand all of it. So, now, most of the time when we've been designing dipoles, we've been using just an, what's called an open-end fed dipole, meaning uh, it's just two wires going in, in separate directions, either horizontal or vertical. Now, Yagi's have the option to use a, a, a closed fed dipole, which is just a loop. It's a direct short. And the reason we use this is primarily so we can change the impedance to match on the feed line, or coax. But we're not going to do that because, honestly, when you're, when, you're, when you're designing a Yagi, if you're off measurement, now because we're going to be operating on lower frequencies than, than microwave, 2.4 gigahertz, we, our measurements can be fairly off. So you don't have to be anal retentive about your measurements. But if your driven element, if your dipole is off measurements and it's a fed, uh, a, a, a closed loop dipole, and that loop is just off measurement, all of these will be thrown off. So it'll just throw your gain off and your patterns and all that. So this is just one of them that I've made. And this is a collapsible one, which I'll show you in a little bit. It's kind of big. This one's for two meters, so it's going to get kind of big. But uh, we're going to go to the software side, and we're going to go check out Quick Yagi and another application that's used for uh, simulating and building Yagi antennas off of calculators. Here we have Quick Yagi for DOS application, but and you can run it in DOSBox or QEMU if you're not running a, a Windows machine that can do DOS or you know Linux or OS X. Okay, so this application will automatically design Yagi antennas for you up to 999 megahertz, so no 2.4 gig stuff. Okay, so we're going to go through some of the options real quick. So you hit F2, you can change from metric to uh, uh, imperial, back and forth, no problem, or the type of fed element, which is really important. Now you have to select whether you're going to be using a simple dipole, a folded dipole. I prefer a simple dipole just because the measurements on them are a whole hell of a lot easier to deal with and you don't have to really worry about you know getting all your, your bends in, in proper uh, proper alignment. So our operating oh, wait, let's go back a bit. So we're gonna go to auto mode and auto design a Yagi. And we're gonna go and optimize for maximum front to back ratio and bandwidth because we don't care about the spacings, we care about a broader frequency range. Now we're gonna uh, design our first antenna for 440 megahertz, which lies directly in the middle of the amateur radio 70 center band, 70 centimeter band. Now you can also do this for uh, the PMR and FRS bands as well. Now, will all elements be the same diameter? Yes. Number of directors or parasitic elements? We're going to do two. The antenna I just showed you, two. Uh, element uh, diameter in inches is point uh, one. Now it's going to automatically calculate through all this. Let's take some of let's let's look at some of this information. The array length is going to be 0.87 feet. 
Now we're going to have an estimated gain of 8.17 decibels. Now we're operating at a center frequency of 440 megahertz. The reflector length, the very last element on the antenna, is going to be 1.12 feet. The fed element, your dipole, needs to be 1.07 feet. The reflector spacing, the spacing from the reflector to the dipole, will be 0.27 feet. We have two directors with a 0.1 inch diameter. We have the first director, the spacing from the dipole to the first director will be 0.22 feet. The second and last director on the tip of the antenna will be 0.36 feet. Now unfortunately I have to put some screenshots up in the show notes of the, um, and explain the, the plotting option, the F3 here, but you can see the estimated radiated pattern. If you remember when I was first explaining how to do, um, like how antennas work and what their purpose is, I was explaining with a balloon and how you're manipulating RF energy. Well, this will show you the plotted uh, frequency range in which you'll get the best reception as well as what your, your receiving and transmitting pattern will look like. So let's go and see if we can boost up and make a little bit more oomph out of this. So we're going to reset the software. We're going to hit AAM, 440 megahertz. All elements will be the same diameter, number of directors. Let's go with 15. And we're going to do 0.1 inches. It's going to take a little while to go and, and calculate through all of this. And if you notice now with 15 elements, we'll get 13 and a half decibels of gain, but we're almost nearing 8 feet. And the more elements you add to a Yagi antenna, the more precise, more beam-like it gets. It becomes less directional, more directional. I will put some images up on the show notes about this. So this is Quick Yagi. This is a, a very good application to allow you to automatically generate and uh, engineer Yagi antennas. Now let's go to the table side and look at some of the engineering aspect. Alrighty, so we've gone through quick Yagi real quick and we've designed a, uh, a Yagi antenna. Now I don't have the coax on this so you'll have to bear with me. Now this, as I've mentioned, is the reflector. This is going to catch radio waves that have either come from the side or have been passed over the director uh, elements. This is your your driven element. This will be a simple dipole fashion, uh, non-closed loop, you know, I'm a dipole, hi, how's it going? And these are going to be your parasitic or your director element. So the radio waves are going to enter the front of the antenna or in fact being transmitted out and focused using these elements. Now in this specific design all I've really used was uh, spokes from a bicycle. I've just cut them, I, well first I stapled them on then I had to hammer the staples down to make them re really solid. Now you can also use any, any conductive material. So you know you can use copper wire, you can use axles, you can use copper pipe. Uh, one thing that I've noticed, you can get a uh, re really nice axles or, or steel rod. And there's the uh, the U-shaped tie like tack downs for coax that you can use to tack it down. Now some people will use a conductive material like maybe say aluminum to go and hold all of their uh, their elements on. But you have to make sure that your driven element is not being conducted into the boom of the uh, the antenna. So try to uh, make sure that this is mm, isolated from your driven element. This is usually why I use plastic or wood. That end, it's kind of easy to work with. Now when working with PVC pipe, it's got a round top and it's a bitch to drill into, especially when you, so I like to use flat wood. Of course, this would be more of a portable antenna. It really wouldn't be uh, something I'd put outside. Now, as for attaching your your uh, your coax, all you'd have to do is either solder to each side. If you're using uh, metal that you can't solder onto, you can use. Let me get this out for you. You can go ahead and crimp on ring connectors. These are automotive ring connectors, in which you can either solder onto these, or you can use nut, nuts and bolts and just create a uh, like a little clamp down for for your uh, for your feed line. Now, of course, as always, you want to use the proper feed line for the appropriate frequency. And that's just the basic build of, of a Yagi. Now, I've, I've got this one here. This was made on an old, uh, an old uh, hockey stick, and I've got TV antenna, uh, TV antenna elements that can pull out. And we'll, uh, we'll go out and do a different angle on this thing because it's, uh, it's close to three feet long. Okay, let's do a recap. This is a 
70 centimeter amateur radio antenna. Now this is tuned for 440 megahertz. We just built this. So it has two director elements, one driven element, which is a simple dipole, as well as a reflector element. And Quick Yagi has helped us design uh, the length of the reflector, the length of the dipole, the length of each directors, and the spacing between them. And this would be the back of the antenna, and this would be the front of the antenna, and the dipole is always the second element in the antenna. And all the ones in the front are called directors. Now, this isn't too bad. Uh, you know, we got a nice non-conductive, sturdy wooden material, and we got some nice elements that are pretty much just tacked on with staples. And here is another antenna that I mentioned uh, a little while ago. This is the one that I use TV antennas on. Uh, the old, uh, you know, old bunny ear style antennas. Now, unfortunately, this one was designed for uh, two meters, 144 megahertz center frequency, and I used a magic marker, which I'm uh, to mark where the antenna lengths need to be extended. But uh, I'm just th throwing this together to show you the size difference here. Okay, this is two meter amateur radio, 144 megahertz, compared to 444 megahertz. Big difference here because like I've been explaining all this time that when your frequency changes, when your frequency increases, your wavelength shrinks, thus a smaller antenna and harder to make. When you have lower frequencies, your antenna is much bigger, but they are much more forgiving. So this is just some of the basics of, of Yagi antenna design. I'll put a bit in the show notes about this. Now the discrete math and whatnot is extremely complicated and I really don't feel that I'm one to explain it and um, you know you're gonna just spend a whole lot more time wasting pencil lead and pulling out your hair trying to figure out a lot of the discrete math unless you're a really hardcore math nerd. Now if now there's nothing wrong with that it's just pfft, over my head. So you can rely on software. I got two more applications that are Java applications that will allow you to, um, to uh, uh, design antennas and whatnot, uh, Yagi specifically, and it, they'll even account for what material you're using, whether it be uh, steel, aluminum, gold, you know, it, it takes a lot into account. So, uh, I'll put a lot in the show notes. This is just some of the build design and techniques. It's really simple once you understand the, the like four major components of a Yagi being the boom, the reflector, the driven element, and the reflecting elements, or sorry, the, uh, the parasitic or director elements. So, um, all right, I gotta cut this, cut this off here. If you have any questions or comments, you can always catch me on IRC or on the forums. I uh, have fun, everyone.